Right guys, how are you doing? And welcome to our Unity playlist. Um, I think we're going to start this one with the Unity Insulation Resistance Tester, uh, which is the model UT501A. Um, this is a bit of a favorite, and I'll tell you why. There's a few things I like, there's a few things I don't like. Um, there's only one thing I don't like. Two. So, it's very simple. There's, no, there's nothing complicated about it. It's got your AC volts to check if your line is live. Um, and then it's got your voltage that you want to test at. Very simple. No need for calibration, all sorts of stories. Um, comes with a nice little carry case. And then also it's cover. can clip on the back. Uh, runs off six uh, AA batteries. And, um, and that's essentially it. What's in the bag is a strap. I'm never going to use that. It's got a set of test leads. Interesting design. Um, but the one thing I don't like about it, okay, that, that's the back of it, is that this cover will screw on there to give you a normal looking test lead. And then you've got these clamps. And these clamps are what I'm using all the time, really. Because you don't want to be playing with it. You just want to clamp it on and test. Um, so these will just screw on. You don't need to screw them on too tight. And now this just, you know, this the, the one thing I don't like about it is just, you know, really, really silly little things. But they do make a difference. Um, and that is that that doesn't fit in the bag with those on. It's what you're going to be using most of the time so every time you've got to take it off or unscrew it pop it in there but i mean it's not the end of the world so what you're paying for um is it's great now what is an insulation test what is it exactly what is insulation what is it testing um without driving you mad with a whole lot of formulas i'm just going to talk about resistance instead of insulation because Resistance is, is the basic, basic mechanism of, of, of what makes electricity work for us. And there's no point in having electricity if it doesn't work for us. So when you run an electrical charge through a light bulb, for example, it is a resistor. Everything is a resistor. Um, that light bulb will have elements in and, well, the LED nowadays, but that will convert that it resists the electricity and it will convert that into light. A motor is a coil which forms a magnet which forms resistance going through the coil, turns it into electric, an electric motor. Um, you get the idea. Now you get your conductive resistors like a light, like a motor, they are conducting electricity. And then you get your insulating resistor. For example, A. This over here is a resistor. That is why when you've got an overhead power cable, you don't get shocked by it because it's insulating, the air is insulating you from that power cable. Then you've got a normal electric cable that has plastic over it. That is an insulative resistor. It is preventing you from being shocked when you touch the wire. But it's also preventing the current from going across there or across there and causing the power to trip or making sparks, whatever. Um, now, just like air, because we've seen air fail as a resistor, right? Uh, in the form of lightning. When there's just too much, too much voltage, too high, it's going to shoot through those clouds and you get lightning, big bang. Um, that is an example of an insulating resistor failing. Um, then you get cables like this cable, for example, that we're going to be testing now. And that is a to carry the current through, but it's to protect the electricity from going from one of these wires in, across any of them or into the fence, or touching you and shocking you, one way or the other. So we're going to be, we're not going to be talking about an insulation tester, or a mega or something. 
we're going to talk about insulation resistance. And the unit of resistance is the ohm. So we can talk about a thousand ohms, we can talk about 800 ohms, we can talk, but insulation resistance runs into the millions of ohms, which is why we talk about mega ohms. And that's why these things are often commonly referred to as a mega, because it tests for mega ohms, it tests for extremely high resistance. Um, now we can check this cable with the little multimeter. The only problem is when you have to actually run voltage through the cable. So if I put out that on 20M, which is 20 mega ohms maximum, so it is now measuring ohms. I'm going to measure this and it is showing me a failure, which is quite good. Um, so you can test. Interestingly enough, I have cut the ends off to get a good clear copper, and this you can see here was uh, a bit corroded, and that gave me a higher, um, a higher reading, a bit more accurate reading. Uh, when it comes to things like cables, uh, geyser elements, kettles, oven elements, you really need to be testing it according to the National Bureau of Standards. Um, we 230 volts here, so you need to be testing it at 500 volts and your insulation minimum um, value is 1 million ohms. So there has to be 1 million ohms of resistance between those two and between those two and between those two. So this is a very, very simple machine to use. First, you want to see that it's not live, which you can test with the multimeter or anything. The cable must be disconnected on both ends. This was attached to the gate motor. No, it's, this, it's not attached anymore. And it's open and there. So first thing we want to do is check for a dead short. So a dead short means that these two, somewhere along the line, those, those wires are touching each other. So we set our multimeter onto diode and we're just going to check across there, across there and across there and all of them gave us an open line reading. Um, we'll do a separate video on the multimeter. So we've checked for voltage using the multimeter which you can look at the multimeter video and now we want to look for resistance. So like I said, anything under one mega ohm is going to cause a failure. Um, anything under, like an element, the, the Bureau of Standards says one mega ohms at, tested at 500 volts is the minimum, right? Um, anything below that, it will start tripping and everything. But basically, really, between one and say five mega ohms. It means, it doesn't actually mean that the cable or element is good. I mean, this thing can test these elements, oven elements, as said. It means that um, it's, it's okay, it's acceptable. So that's the minimum value. Above 10 mega ohms is, is good. You know, then the cable is good. You know, like 100 is excellent, you know. So as it goes up, it's not to say that you must have the bare minimum, but let's see. So first we're going to test between the neutral and the live. So what we do, it's very simple. We're going to switch it to 500 volts because that's what they say, test it at, and press test. Now you see it starts to shout. And it's giving us a reading there of... It's going a little bit over one, but it's also going down. The longer you leave it on, the more it is. But this is still not really as it is. This is okay, but not great. Now you see it's gone up. But this wire was tripping. So I switched it off. It was causing the electricity or the, the DB board. Whoop, maybe that's not bad, you know, to trip. So I'm testing between the neutral and earth now, back to 500 volts, I should have had that off, 
We're going back to five hundred volts. And between the neutral and the earth is call it eight mega ohms. Eight point four. That's okay. Then we want to test between the live and the neutral, the other earth. And it is shouting and screaming because it's going to be beeping like that because it's 0.3 mega ohms. 0 0.29, 0 0.3. So somewhere along this cable, along the whole line, let's turn that off. Um, somewhere along this line that runs through the gate motor, there is a failure in the resistance between the live and our earth. Guys, it's that simple. Um, going to just go back. So that was giving us a very bad reading and tested with a multimeter. You see what that says. Can you see now the multimeter is telling me that's 1.28. So, according to this, the, the minimum requirements, it's above minimum requirements. It should be okay. This is just a bit of an indicator. This is not how you test a cable for insulation resistance. When you're testing something for insulation resistance, you have to test it at the voltage times to what it's being used at. So, again, let's go through there. Pop it on. So we got 1.2 there. Now we're going to test. And you're getting 0 0.29, 0 0.3. There you can see. It, it's not even halfway of what it should be at. So that's where our failure is. Our failure is on the cable. Um, and this is why you cannot rely on this to test for damaged cable. Because this only puts out 1 volts. That puts out 500 or 1000 volts. So that is why this piece of kit is very, very useful. A multimeter has its own uses. But this, the Unity UT501A, is a very simple, very easy to use, as you can see. And, and that's pretty much it. Now, I want to test, quickly while we are here, let's turn this and see what's going on. Because here's a new cable, right? And I want to see if this cable has failed. Because let's imagine you're in a workshop, you've got an extension lead that's running across, and you've got an expensive piece of equipment sitting there, and someone's run a trolley through, now it keeps tripping and now you get guys in and you're paying a fortune to have this piece of equipment tested but you didn't test the actual cable that goes to it so we have a cable that's open on both ends and i'm going to test the integrity of the insulation on this cable so i'm just going to run it between the live and neutral again I'm going to put it up to 500 volts and we're going to test. So that's 5.5 giga ohms. So this cable is 100%. Now I'm going to switch it off. I mean, it's giga ohms. That, that's excellent. And I'm going to take the end and I'm going to put it in the. Well, I'm going to turn it off first. I'm going to put it in this glass of water and then it's probably going to try and jump out the whole time. Remember it was 5.5 giga ohms. Back to our 500 volts and we test. Look at that. Zero, zero. It is like this thing is just measuring continuity. Let's take it out. Test it again. We've gone back to 5.5 giga ohms. Put it in the water. 
So water is obviously a conductive resistor. And so you can see outside, you're going to see maybe there's a, a connector like this, this box here. Gets water in and it's causing a short. So this is a very, very, very useful piece of kit to just run through the cabling. You know, I've seen so many houses with their DB boards um, bypassed earth because they're continually having something trip. It's not the answer, you know. It's a fence. Someone touches that fence, they could get shocked. Um, and so this is kind of worth it if you if you if you're having that problem or you know something similar something just yeah, something keeps tripping and uh that is that is the one thing the other thing so the only things that i don't like about it right okay it comes with a strap I'm, I'm actually just going to take that off because i mean i've seen guys use it i know i won't um is that i have to take these off uh, to get it to fit in the bag. And the other thing is, and, and, and this is not a unity thing, it's a pretty standard thing, is that when you're testing a geese element, for example, your thermostat plugs in to the geezer. So you need to check the resistance, and there are formulas for that, of the element between the live and neutral. And you also need to check the insulation between the geezer live and earth like this one was there was a problem on the live and earth and you need to check between the neutral and earth and the only way to do that because you can't like shove your test leads in that so i just chuck a bag of these little electrical connectors in there so I, once you've taken your thermostat out you can just plug those in and you can clamp your leads onto there and you're pretty much golden so I mean, like if you are doing this, you've got connectors lying around. So, yes, for me, it's not a deal breaker. And like I said, um, no other insulation test that comes with that adapter. And but you've got that in your tool bag. So essentially, we know this cable is buggered between the live and the earth. So what I'm going to do is just whack it off here. And that's the end of that because it had a light here it's no longer being used and nowadays you get little solar lights and stuff so guys um thanks for watching please leave a comment if you found this video helped you um as i have been i've looked at a lot of videos on these and they go into very complex formulas and everything and, and it really isn't complex you know it it, it, it must be above one million ohms one mega ohm or if it's below it, replace. If it's above it and it's a little bit down, replace. Um, and that's essentially what it is. It's not a complicated piece of kit. It's not a rocket science, um, but it can save you a lot of money. Uh, you know, if you have an electrician come out a few times, I mean, if you don't know your way around electrical, right, guys, don't be playing with this stuff. If you don't know your way around, just don't be playing with it because you're going to be some swearing and you're lucky if you can get the swear words out um you don't want that really if you do have a good knowledge you can test you can find a short you can find a damaged cable you can test your extension leads theoretically you should be able to test your geezer from the bb board if it's disconnected live and neutral and earth you got all three there must be no power on the circuit you test it and off you go and if there is anything below one mega ohms, because remember that tripping happens at the DB board, it will give you a quick indication, is it the geezer or is it something else? So guys, yeah, please, if you like this video, like and subscribe and um, follow me for more. Thanks a lot.